Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, Ukraine's president is set to have talks with Moscow today as Russian President Vladimir Putin's troops and tanks move deeper into the country. Outside with live cam, it was a raw and cold Saturday and then an absolutely wonderful Sunday featuring, well, lots of sun. Let's see what the work week is looking like with Mike Osterhage coming up. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday. It is the last day of the month, the 28th. And Sarah Costa is in for Stephanie Cerna. So happy to be here and also happy to finish out February. And hopefully, Mike, this is like the end of this freezing cold temperatures. I, I'm with her. I'm kind of hoping we can turn the page into a new month and start this warming trend in earnest. Well, the month is going to start off on a warming trend. Mm -hmm. So uh, sometimes we can have, you know, little cold snaps here and there. But, you know, we're done with the squirrely or almost done with the squirrely February weather. <laughs> that always seems to be the case. Uh, yeah, it couldn't have been nicer yesterday to be outside. You said you uh, did not wear your sunscreen. I did not, and I paid for it. Half my face and neck are red. As the experts always say, no matter what the weather, what the cloud cover, what time of year, wear and that's going to be a good uh, good thing to think about today as well, because we're going to have plenty of sunshine out there. Clear skies right now. Uh, we're talking about a warming trend, but that's before we or after we get done with another very cold morning. 20s throughout all of the uh, hill country, Balverde 25, 33 at the airport, freezing at Randolph. And there's enough of a breeze out there. Yep, we got some wind chill to deal with. Feels like 27 out at the airport right now and 24 at Port S.A. And then it's going to warm up very nicely, almost a repeat of yesterday, except a little bit warmer than that. Mold is on the low side and throughout the rest of the morning temperatures will continue to drop down another few degrees here and there. We will be hitting freezing here in town, clear, cold, and then more than double that up to 66, just about a little shy of the uh, normal high temperature, which is now 70, but a great looking day. And then the warming trend does continue. Big question is, is there any rain? We'll answer that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Mark. Thank you, Mike. A toddler who police say accidentally shot herself in the head has died from her injuries. A shooting happened earlier this month on Dublin Street near Pickwell Drive. Officers were called for a self-inflicted gunshot. When they arrived, Jules Gonzalez had been shot in the head. It's still unclear exactly how she was shot. Jules' mother and her boyfriend were at the home at the time of the shooting. At last check, no charges have been filed. This investigation is ongoing. 432, you're looking live at Kyiv, Ukraine. Today, Ukraine holding talks with Russia as Russian forces continue their all-out assault. Meanwhile, the White House is still urging diplomacy. At the same time, the U.S. and several EU nations have already announced far-reaching new financial punishments against Russia. CNN's Cole Higgins reports. A Ukrainian delegation agreeing to meet with Russia for talks at the Ukrainian-Belarusian border Monday morning, local time. We are ready for peace talks, but we are not ready to surrender. This as Russian President Vladimir Putin orders his country's deterrence forces, including nuclear arms, on high alert. This is really a pattern that we've seen from President Putin through the course of this conflict, which is uh, manufacturing threats that don't exist in order to justify further aggression. Putin's move comes as Russian forces advanced into Ukraine's second largest city, where street fighting broke out. But after massive explosions heard near the capital city, Kyiv, the mayor said on Sunday no Russian Russian troops are on the ground there. The Russians are very frustrated right now, and truthfully, they have not accomplished any of their objectives on the timetable that they thought they would. Sunday, the U.S. Secretary of State announcing nearly $54 million in humanitarian aid to Ukraine. There are now at least 368,000 refugees from the Ukraine crisis, according to the U.N. Refugee Agency. We're not going to put boots on the ground. We're not going to put American troops in danger. But we will work with the Ukrainians to give them the ability to, uh, to defend themselves. Ukraine and some U.S. officials calling on the White House to do more and keep upping the sanctions against Russia. You can't get the sanctions too high. Let's keep on uh, cranking up the sanctions against what is a, an evil regime. I'm Cole Higgins reporting.
A collision between an Austin City bus and a vehicle sends several people to the hospital. And now Austin police are trying to get to the bottom of what happened. Happened on East 11th at I-35 Service Road yesterday after an Austin City Metro bus with passengers on board T-boned a car carrying three adults and two children. Two adults were pinned inside and had to be cut free. The two children were unconscious when medics arrived. In total, nine people were taken to various Austin hospitals. That intersection closed for hours as police investigated the cause of the crash. Well, Metro sent out a statement about the crash in part saying from video recorder on the bus, it appears that a vehicle ran a red light and our bus made contact with it. Our hearts are all with all those who are impacted, end quote. Well, crews have been putting up a fence around Capitol grounds ahead of President Biden's State of the Union address. The move comes after a group of protesters announced plans to drive semi trucks into the D.C. area this week to demonstrate against the government. The Capitol Police chief says the decision to put up the fence was made in conjunction with the U.S. Secret Service. National Guard troops and outside law enforcement agencies are also expected to help out with security. Capitol Police say a number of roads in D.C. will be closing ahead of the speech scheduled for tomorrow. A Texas man charged with storming the U.S. Capitol with a holstered handgun on his waist is the first January 6th defendant to go to trial. Jury selection is scheduled to start today in the case against Gus Wesley Reffitt. He's also charged with interfering with police officers at the Capitol and with threatening his teenage children if they reported him to authorities after the riots. Reffitt's trial could be an indicator for many other capital riot cases. A conviction would give prosecutors more leverage in plea talks. An acquittal may lead others to wait for their own day in court. 436, about 35 degrees. San Antonio Spurs are almost ready to come home, but they have one more stop to make on their rodeo road trip. We'll have a preview of tonight's game against the Grizzlies. Checking Trans Guide right now. See how things are looking out there in this very early Monday. Flashing lights at 410 and Ingram. That is a construction spot, if I recall. I-10 at Frio Light Traffic and 35 at Loop 410. Like Mike said earlier, hopefully the squirrely month of February weather is ending soon at 35 degrees this morning. He says we have some warmer temps in the future. He'll let us know about that when we come back. Just about 440 Spurs have one game left on their rodeo road trip, and that will take place tonight in Memphis before returning home to the friendly confines of the AT&T Center on Thursday. What made their recent loss to Miami so amazing is the Spurs were playing without three starters, DeJounte Murray, Keldon Johnson, and Yaka Pirtle after scoring 157 points the night before. It was the most points scored by a Spurs team under Coach Pop as their head coach. That meant others would have to step up, and they did playing against the Heat, who had played the Knicks the night before in New York. Devin Vassell scored a career-high 22 points. Kaida Bates D opted the same, and Lonnie Walker also threw down 22 that included some pretty amazing dunks. The loss would hold Coach Pop just too shy of becoming the winningest, winningest uh, coach in NBA history. I'm just happy that our team fought back, especially after coming from a back-to-back -back and a double overtime. Um, we didn't make no excuses, especially playing the number one team in the Eastern Conference. Um, so we did what we can, um, had a lot of turnovers into the, I think the second, second quarter that kind of hurt us a little bit, but uh, we fought. I couldn't have been more proud of them. Uh, they were spectacular. Uh, and they took a big hit in the second quarter. We had, I think, 11 turnovers in the second quarter, and they came back. Uh, but we just kept on playing, and that's the character of these guys. It's probably the most special thing about them. Fourth quarter. Coach Pop can tie his former boss Don Nelson with a win tonight in Memphis. That would put him at 1,335 victories. Then he would have the first opportunity to break it when the Spurs host the Kings coming up this Thursday. So tip off the night against the Grizz for seven. Kings are in town 7:30 Thursday night. The Spurs back on the road again Saturday over in Charlotte against the Hornets. The 2022 United Soccer League regular season almost here in SAFC looking to make another deep run in the playoff, but every season has its differences and these are some new jerseys for the new season. Check out the new blackout primary jersey. This will be the home primary jersey this season and that's not all. The team will have a new alternate jersey which will be used for road games and select home games at Toyota Field called Viva Nights. You can buy the new kits from the SAFC store online or 
the soccer factory. Let's take a look at the home opener, which will have fireworks after the game. They'll be taking to Detroit, Detroit City FC. That's set for Saturday, March 12th, coming up very soon, 7.30 at Toyota Field. Final day of the San Antonio Stock Show Rodeo last night. Second ride of the evening. Lucchese Morris on hard to handle. The bull definitely lived up to its name. Morris hand get caught and he gets bucked off. Luckily, he'd avoid the hooves and get away safely. Stetson Wright not so lucky after two successful eight second rides where his bull came off his hooves. Wright decides to go for a second re-ride. The third trip did not go well. His head made contact with the bull and he's knocked off at the six second mark. Wright was conscious and smiling as he was helped off. The ride of the night, courtesy of world champ Sage Steel Kimsey on top of Old Sun. Look at the power. His ride scores a 92 and he is your rodeo champion. Nice belt buckle, sir. Yeah, congratulations. And absolutely. And we're done. That's a wrap for the Stock Show and Rodeo this awesome. year. Awesome. All right, it's 443 and 35 degrees. And next, why many Ukrainian women say they are foregoing the chance to leave and staying to fight for their country. Many Ukrainian women are staying back and taking up arms to fight the Russian invasion. ABC's Ariel Rashif has details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, they are Ukraine's mothers, daughters, politicians, beauty queens. Now they are on the front lines defending their country under siege. I was helping my husband to pack for a war, you know, like T-shirts, underwear, weapons. Um, and then I thought, OK, he's going to war. I'm going to. Men are required by martial law to stay back and fight the Russian invasion. But many Ukrainian women are foregoing the chance to leave, standing shoulder to shoulder with them. On Instagram, rifle in hand, Anastasia Lena, a former Miss Grand Ukraine, posting patriotic hashtags. One video in her story with the caption, training, the invaders will die on our land. All world, see this. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on the pivotal role Ukrainian women are playing as war unfolds in their streets. With your GMA First Look, I'm Ariel Reshev, ABC News, New York. Sarah, what do you say we check Transkai one more time at 447? How about it? Things look pretty smooth out there, mm -hmm. 281 at Loop 410. Nothing going on at 1604 there, and 37 at Hackberry looking pretty clear. Well, again, we are just, we, are, we were reveling in the fact that it was so much warmer and nicer yesterday. Not a cloud Beautiful. in the sky, lots of sunshine. Yeah, we didn't see sun since last Tuesday, and then all of a sudden the sun was like, hey, I'm back. Yeah. I was like, yep. Thank, thanks for coming up. Got about a week's <laughs> worth of vitamin D yesterday, Mike Ostrange. Yeah. <laughs> and finally got a chance to, you know, just really step outside without a coat on. If you're in the shadows, yeah. though, it was still kind of on the chilly side, but just absolutely gorgeous. Speaking of coats, grab one this morning because it is really, really cold out there. We've got some clear skies right now and the wind chill. Now, the actual air temperatures are down in the 20s in the hill country, and then we have a wind chill to deal with on Port S.A., Randolph, and as well as out there at the airport. Not overly blustery, but just enough, obviously, and it feels like 22 right now in Hondo. And the air is actually even drier than what it was yesterday. Of course, we started off a couple of clouds early yesterday morning. They cleared on out and the drier air has been continuing to pump on in here and this is helping to allow things to cool down when you have dry air, clear skies, light or no wind to deal with. And so uh, dew points are down about uh, 10, 15, 20 degrees. It's the measure of moisture in the atmosphere and that's how you figure out the relative humidity and the dew points are going to be staying on the lower side as a matter of fact going down somewhat so that's just going to keep this beautiful weather around here it's going to warm up nicely today and then cool down fairly quickly tonight because we are going to have plenty of sunshine once again today as well as tomorrow and then we'll start to see a few more high clouds uh, move on in here that's going to be sort of the the first wave and then more clouds will start to come in here as these dew points continue to go up by the about the second half of of the week, then moisture really starts to work its way back on in here. So clouds going to be thickening up satellite picture. Nothing going on out there whatsoever. And what's interesting is is to look at the entire country and other than a some moisture and some clouds coming in from the Pacific Ocean down there, everything notice this kind of stream or this pathway that goes across the northern tier of the United States. So we are getting back into instead of having all those big roller coaster waves, if you will, in the upper level steering winds, it's almost straight west to east. So we're almost getting into a what's known as a zonal pattern, which keeps our temperatures 
at or in this case slightly above normal. That high is pretty much in control. All the activity, all the really, really cold air is staying up there to the north. Now we will have cool mornings, jacket weather, but then we continue the warming process as we go in toward the weekend. The other problem is um, there's really not much, if anything, as far as any rain. By the weekend, we are going to start to get more of a southwesterly flow. That, again, is going to help with the cloud cover, help with the moisture around here. And there may be some little disturbances trying to slide by to give us a shower Saturday a couple of showers on Sunday, but uh, nothing really as far as any any decent rain around here. I mean, again, one or two showers by late in the weekend. 60 today at noon. Just a beautiful, beautiful day. Jacket throughout the rest of the morning, and then we're going to top off at 66 later on today. Still just shy of normal, and one of those days where if you get in the shadows, maybe kind of cool. Take a jacket tonight because it will cool off quickly. We get down to 38 again tomorrow, 40 Wednesday morning. Again, more high clouds move on in here, and then very slowly but surely, temperatures go up 2, 3, 4 degrees each and every day. We're going to be really pushing at uh, close to 80 by the weekend. We'll have a lot more clouds around here. A couple of showers. Maybe Saturday, few more on Sunday, but rain chances just are not anything looking great right now. Yesterday I was looking at the weather service. They posted how erratic a month temperature wise February was. I mean, you guys have been talking about this for a couple of days, but it was literally all over the place. We well, were above normal and below normal. <laughs> and again, we had some some ice and everything starting off the month. Yeah, got up into the upper 80s, yeah. a lot of 90s, and then just last week. All right. Or, Looking, looking for a milder month of yeah, all, all, all in all. Chill March. Love February. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Right now, 451, about 34 degrees. Up next, a big award for Jennifer Hudson, plus Tom Holland continues his reign at the box office. A lot of numbers. Pick three, 800 Fireball 1. Daily four numbers, 8950 Fireball 5. Cash 5, 19, 21, 23, 30, 32. Texas Lotto, 24, 26, 35, 37, 46, 50. And Powerball 15, 32, 36, 48, 64, Powerball 19, Power Play 3. With no new major releases, this weekend's box office top five is exactly like last weekend's. There are places out there you can't find on any map. Uncharted holds first with a further $23.2 million, followed by Dog, Spider-Man No Way Home, Death on the Nile, and Jackass Forever. Do you guys get this overwhelming sense of death? Rock band Foo Fighters Horror Comedy Studio 666 bows an eight, but everyone's just marking time until Friday. Justice. The answer's justice. That's when the Batman debuts nationwide, already tracking to open with well over 100 million bucks. Saturday Night Live tabled its usual cold open this weekend, instead featuring the Ukrainian chorus Dumka of New York, performing Prayer for Ukraine as Russian troops continue their invasion of the Eastern European nation. Jennifer Hudson was named Entertainer of the Year at Saturday Night's NAACP Image Awards, broadcast live on BET. And train singer Pat Monahan is 53 Monday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. It's now four minutes till 5, 34 degrees. President Biden, along with many European nations, have ratcheted up san sanctions on Russia. We'll get an update on today's scheduled talks between Ukraine's president and Vladimir Putin. And we'll tell you more about this new concept, smartphone that folds in and out. That's coming up in your morning Tech Bites. And taking a look outside the roads this morning, Justin Horn is in for Stephen Cavazos this morning, and he'll give us an update on the roads when we come back. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Two people managed to escape a shooting outside a bar on the city's east side overnight. Details coming up. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. Russia and Ukraine are poised to meet today, although expectations are low for a breakthrough. This says President Biden is set to talk to allies about how to move forward. The latest development.
Another chilly start to our Monday morning. We're starting at 34 degrees at 459 this morning. Mike says, though, it might be the last one for at least the next couple of days. We'll explain how things are going to warm up. And good morning to you. It is Monday, February 28th. Sarah's on the schedule this morning. And look, she showed up. I'm so happy to be here. You're so surprised. <laughs> no. no, I'm happy to be here. I'm always always a joy to be next to you, Mark. I'm glad you're with us this morning, Sarah. Let's jump over to Mike Osterhage. We had a nice warm afternoon and boy, did it cool off overnight quickly. Yep, with all that dry air in place and that's going to be the situation tonight as well. And yes, it is darn right cold out there. 33 degrees out at the airport and we've got some really dry air. Notice that bottom number is down to 23, the dew point temperature and a slight bit of a breeze, clear skies and that's perfect ingredient, all the ingredients, perfect formula for uh, some radiational cooling. That's why it is so cold out there. There have been a huge warm up. We are going to more than double the, uh, the current temperature, getting up into the mid and even upper 60s later on today. Uh, yesterday, the aquifer did go up one tenth of a foot, and the allergens. Mold, that's all that's showing up. Are we finally done with mountain cedar? It looks like the season has now come to an end. All right, we have a bit of a breeze out there, and you know what that means when these temperatures are so cold. It is wind chill, and that 33 feels like 28 here in town. Wind chills down to 14 in Kerrville, 24 at Randolph. Definitely bundle up. And we are going to have jacket weather in the mornings pretty much all week long, maybe not by the end of the week, but then it's going to warm up nicely. Now today is going to be a lot like yesterday where uh, if you're in the shadows, it may be kind of chilly this morning. Yeah, definitely cold, clear, cold, and then plenty of sunshine. Mid 60s, just a very, very nice day. Humidity is going to be really pleasant as well. Cools off quickly tonight. Plenty of sunshine again tomorrow. We'll start to see a few more high clouds working their way on in here. Warmer temperatures tomorrow and still warmer the rest of the week. And then clouds continue to thicken up and we'll be pushing 80 degrees by the weekend. Big question is, will we see any rain? One thing for sure, emphasize no matter what the weather, uh, especially yesterday, not a lot of sunshine and a lot of people being outside. Don't forget your sunscreen, even if it's on the cloudiest day. Don't forget your sunscreen. All right, traffic authority. Justin is in right now for Stephen. What's going on, sir? You brought that up, Mike, because I have a sunburn, didn't you? I did? Yeah. No. I felt like it was well signed. It, yesterday was sunny. It was beautiful, by the way, as Mike said. We're looking at traffic this morning. Everything is really pretty quiet out there. We have a couple of uh, issues here and there, but nothing too much yet. It's a slow start to the Monday morning commute. And that's a good thing. As we look at some of the roads here, 35 and Loop 410 looks good. Open freeways here at 410 and Jackson Keller. The one spot we are watching along 410 is there near Ingram. Of course, we've had construction there the last couple days, and uh, they're starting to clean that up now. We're starting to see some improvement uh, along 410, uh, where they are doing some of that construction. There we go. There's 410 and Ingram, and you can see there's still some construction vehicles out there, but they've opened up the road. It was closed earlier, and that was causing some slowdowns, but everything looks good now. We're, we're seeing some smooth sailing. Now, that, of course, of course, could change as we get later into the morning. We'll keep you posted if anything does change, but as we look across the city, everything looks good right now. Uh, and if anything changes, we'll let you know, guys. Thank you, Justin. New this morning, San Antonio police are looking for three people wanted in connection to a shooting on the city's east side overnight. It happened around one o'clock this morning in the 300 block of Bell Ringer, just west of I-10. SAPD says a man and a woman were leaving a bar on Bell Ringer when three people started shooting at them from across the street. Police say the two people were able to get away to a nearby hospital for help. Police say they were in stable condition. So far, there's no description of suspects. The 2022 midterm election season opens tomorrow here in Texas. Voters will be casting their votes on Election Day, whether they'll choose either Democratic or Republican primaries to decide who will be on the November general election ballot. Voters will pick their nominees for governor, attorney general, congressional seats, and more. You can scan the QR code on your screen for voting information. You can find things like a list of polling sites, which will be open from 7 to 7 on Tuesday, along with sample ballots. You can also get this information on KSAT. Dot com. All right, it's five o'clock here. You're looking live at Kiev, Ukraine. Russian troops uh, are still pressing on into and around the Ukrainian capital, despite worldwide condemnation. Today, Russia and Ukraine are poised to send delegates to the border of Belarus for talks, though expectations are considered low. This comes as a civilian death toll rises to more than 350, including at least 14 children. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest from Washington. 
This morning, the stage is set for negotiations between Russia and Ukraine near the border with Belarus, although Ukrainian President Zelensky has already admitted to having low expectations for any breakthrough. The conflict in Ukraine presses on, with a major battle underway in Kharkiv, Ukraine's second largest city, where Ukrainian troops managed to push back their attackers' brief siege of the city. U.S. officials and many analysts say Putin underestimated the Ukrainians. He was, I think, clearly hoping for an easier path to victory. And now he's not only uh, losing some tactical engagements, but he's losing this entire war of messaging. The White House calling out Putin's latest move after he ordered his nuclear deterrent forces on high alert in response to what he called aggressive statements from NATO countries. This is really a pattern that we've seen from President Putin through the course of this conflict, which is uh, manufacturing threats that don't exist in order to justify further aggression. President Biden and allies working over the weekend to banish big Russian banks from the main global payment system, SWIFT, a move meant to isolate and cripple Russia's economy. Already this morning, Russia's central bank more than doubled interest rates to an unprecedented 20 percent as they scrambled to manage the fallout from Western sanctions. The U.S. and other nations also shoring up supplies and defense aid to Ukraine as civilians struggle to get out of the country. Me and uh, my husband with my two daughters, uh -huh. we escape uh, because, because I'm very dangerous for my family. And I'm very, very sorry for helping. The U.N. is now estimating over 422,000 people have fled Ukraine, the largest and fastest displacement in Europe since World War II. And when ABC News, Washington. Here at home, a local family's truck was stolen outside of a West Side funeral home, but it was what was inside that has a family begging thieves to have a heart. The Arredondo's family pets, a poodle and a cockatoo, died recently, and their cremated remains were inside urns in the truck. Patricia Arredondo said she's not concerned about the 2001 Red Ford F-250 taken. She wants the ashes returned, no questions asked. Losing them the first time was really, really hard. Then to lose them a second time, it's like unbelievable. Arredondo's truck isn't the only one stolen recently. On February 19th, a vehicle left running at a convenience store was stolen with a seven-month-old baby girl in the back seat. 507, about 34 degrees. Still ahead, we'll give you a first look at Samsung's new laptops that come with better webcams and brighter screens. Next, uh, look at how many enjoyed the final day of the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. Will this be the final time we see temps like 34? Mike says maybe, maybe not, but I'm hoping so. He says we have a warmer couple days ahead. He'll explain when we come back. Five Eleven. The sun came out just in time for the last day of the 2022 San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo yesterday. It was family day and people enjoyed fair foods, petting animals and of course some bullfighting. So organizers say the pandemic didn't hinder a great turnout this year. The carnival returned, which they didn't have last year, and attendees are already looking forward to next year. The rodeo, just to see everybody out, you know, after COVID, it's really cool to see everybody come together and just have a good time. Rodeo did really well. We appreciate everybody's support. We're, our whole mission is all helping educate the youth of Texas. And for everybody to come out and support the rodeo for the start of 2022, we just really appreciate it. We had a great year. Well, around 6,000 volunteers also helped make the event a success. We've been covering the rodeo for the last few weeks. So if you want to look back at all the fun activities, just head to KSAT.com. A lot of fun. 511, 34 degrees. Still ahead, how AT&T is rolling out the latest version of 5G on city street lampposts. And we'll tell you about this new concept phone that folds inwards and outwards.
Book now at dreamsresorts.com with savings of up to 40%. Would you like to try a breakfast sausage made with plants? Plants? It's delicious. And I'm a kid, so if I like it... Mm. Morning Star Farms, America's favorites made from plants. And trying Cognito. Got my hair, got my head, got my brains, got my ears, got my heart, got my soul, got my mouth. All right, hold on. 5.15, Samsung has unveiled its next generation Galaxy Book series of laptops. ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, upgrades for Samsung's Galaxy Book. The company's next generation laptop has improved webcams and brighter screens. The Galaxy Book 2 has three models so far. Pre orders start on March 18th. A fourth business model is coming later in the year. ATD has started deploying and testing 5G small cell radios on street lights in several cities. The company says it's a way of boosting 5G experience in dense urban environments. ATT didn't say which cities the testing is taking place. A new concept phone on display now is so flexible it can fold inward and outward. The Ultra Flex by TCL has a 360 degree rotating hinge to bend the phone in either direction. The prototype has an 8 inch screen and like most foldable phones, the crease is slightly visible. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. It's 516, 34 degrees. Justin is in for Steven. Yes, what's the latest, Justin? Uh, so far, it's a good Monday. That's what we want to see on a, on a Monday morning. The commute has been good so far. We had a couple of spots where we had construction. That is getting cleaned up. That's getting pushed out of the way, so not a problem there. As we look at some of the roadways, it really is smooth sailing. There's just not a lot of cars out there. I think the, a few people are sleeping in this morning. Don't blame me. Uh, we're going to see some sun, though, uh, as we get into the morning hours, obviously, and that means you're going to need sunglasses with you. Don't forget about that. It's been a few days since we've seen the sun. It will be up in full force today. Uh, but a couple more looks here at the roadways, 35, 410. Looks good there, 410 and Jackson Keller. We were watching 410 earlier. They had some construction there, moving everybody off the roadway. That is not the case anymore. Everything has opened it back up. I-35 and Olympia looks good. Same story downtown, 37 at Houston. Uh, yeah, good weather today. And Mike will tell you more about that. Uh, looking pretty good, right? Oh, fantastic. Unlike that from Saturday. Oh my gosh, such a mood. I love the dogs in <laughs> No, Yeah, Gryffindor, but <laughs> was that, seriously, that was Saturday when you just wanted to stay inside, you know, just hunker down, cover up with a blanket, and then yesterday was fantastic. So many people got outside and enjoyed the rodeo, last day of the rodeo and everything else. Today is going to be another day just like that. Tomorrow pretty much as well. Then we start to see a few more clouds come on in here, but we've got a lot of clear skies as of right now. Wind chill temperatures, yep, it's still cold out there. Grab a nice big coat, 23 Port SA, mid-20s uh, all around basically, except for Rio Medina and Divine as far as wind chills. Yesterday we did make it up to 62 degrees, still Almost 10 degrees below normal, but a whole lot better than Saturday with all that sunshine. It's amazing what a little bit of sunshine does just to warm things up. And then today we'll top that, getting up into the uh, mid-60s around here and even some upper 60s. Still, if you get in the shadows, it may be a little on the cool side. And then it's going to cool down fairly quickly tonight once again because we still have a lot of very dry air. And we're still going to be really cold tomorrow morning down to 38 degrees. As a matter of fact, pretty much every morning this week will be jacket weather and then notice how things just go up just by kind of like stair steps a couple of two three four degrees each and every day low temperatures as well as high temperatures and with these low temperatures staying up here even higher thursday friday indication have some more moisture hanging around here because that doesn't allow temperatures to get as cool and some more cloud cover Nothing as far as any cloud cover right now. It is just beautiful out there. And again, around the country, with the exception of some of that moisture coming in there from the Pacific Ocean, everything is pretty much moving straight just about west to east up there. And that's going to keep, again, all of the any disturbances, all the really cold air stays up there. That's pretty much the dividing line with the really cold stuff. Now, we will have our chilly mornings, obviously, but this is the type of pattern that keeps us very warm and getting warmer as the as time goes on. We start to get into more of a southwesterly flow aloft in the atmosphere by the end of the weekend. So that helps with the clouds around here and a couple of disturbances 
may try and squeeze out a shower or two by Saturday, Sunday, but it's just not looking all that great at all. Just one or two of them. The low is going to try and develop out there to the uh, north and west of us by going into the first part of next week and maybe that's going to give us uh, some rain but that's still just way way too far too far on down the road as far as talking about any decent rain chance it's just those one or two showers by probably late in the weekend 60 at noon sunny skies beautiful day open up the windows today 66 for a high temperature nice low humidity so it cools off quickly tonight and then tomorrow down to 38 degrees another cold start and almost double that in the afternoon up to 70 70 being the normal high average high right now and then we start to get on the above average side getting up into the mid upper 70s and a lot of uh, low 80s by the weekend around here it is going to be somewhat on the humid side more clouds and not a great chance of rain did you guys get outside and do anything fun yesterday in the sun? Did yeah. went to a local brewery, uh, but it still was too cold in the shade. It Mike. was very chilly in the shade. Yes, yeah. I was kind of going back and forth outside and doing stuff in the garage. And it's like, haha, sunshine. Oh, yeah. it's cold. Yeah. So I had the smoker going on one side and the chimney on the other, so I had a little <laughs> hot zone little going oven. in the middle. Yeah. Nice. But right. It was perfect February weather. It was gorgeous. 520, about 34 degrees on your Monday. Well, a couple of new brand new Pokemon games break ground and a look at a new documentary featuring a massively popular YouTube personality. That's next in your morning spotlight. Pick three numbers this morning. 800 Fireball 1. Your daily four numbers. 8950 Fireball 5. Cash 5, 19, 21, 23, 30, 32. Texas Lotto, 24, 26, 35, 37, 46, 50. And a look at your Powerball numbers, 15, 32, 36, 48, 64, Powerball 19, Power Play 3. Five twenty-four. We're getting our game on today's entertainment report. And the latest on Pokemon news to a film about a famous YouTuber. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Pokemon trainers have two new adventures ahead. The Pokemon Company has announced Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet, open world games in which towns blend into wilderness and wild Pokemon can be found everywhere from the skies to the seas. Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet are due out late this year for the Nintendo Switch. Hello, all you beautiful people out there. My name is is Jack Septiguy. The documentary How Did We Get Here looks at Sean McLaughlin, better known as Jack Septiguy, the massively popular YouTube personality, entrepreneur, and philanthropist. As a YouTuber used to knowing where the camera is, McLaughlin says his director kept him guessing. There's shots in the documentary where I'm like, I had no idea you were even there, let alone that you were recording everything. So he was he was like a ninja trying to get all of these candid shots and i think that's why it ended up being as good as it is because a lot of the shots that are in it are so human and so normal how did we get here premieres monday on the live stream platform moment house with releases on other digital and vod platforms to follow in hollywood i'm david daniel 525 34 degrees russia's nuclear weapons are on alert are bringing back Cold War fears ahead on GMSA, how Americans are reacting after seeing the effects of the Ukraine conflict in gas prices, stocks and boycotts. Plus, a look at how San Antonio's Ready to Work program is getting people back into well-paying careers. An 18-wheeler is caught on camera crashing on a bridge and falling into a river. There Whoa. it is. Yeah, you're not going to want to miss that. We'll tell you about how that happened. Making headlines this morning, Americans reacting to the latest news on Russia's attack on Ukraine as gas prices and other services are affected. Another chilly start, 34 degrees at 529 this morning. Mike says things will be warming up this week. He'll explain in just a bit. Good morning, everybody. Last day of the month. It's February 28th. Of course, it is Monday morning. So excited to end February. I'm just tired of this roller coaster weather. <laughs> uh, you know, 
we didn't see sun for five days right. until we saw sun yesterday. I mean, we're Spurs fans. We're used to unpredictable, but we're looking for some more predictable <laughs> weather, Michael. Hey, I well, love it, our Spurs. It is going to be more predictable this week, but we are going to go from almost one extreme to the other. It's very, very cold starting off this morning. Got a little clear skies, and then we are going to have a slow, steady warm up as the week uh, progresses. We're going to have a great looking sunrise this morning, by the way, a continuation of yesterday's weather. Of course, with the very dry air that's in place, that and clear skies, light wind, that that's allowed temperatures to really drop down. So we're still holding at 33 right now, and the dew point is about 10 degrees below that light breeze out there, but it's just enough of a breeze then to take that 33 and make it feel like 28, 23 Port SA, 22 is the wind chill right now at Hondo and 25 up the road in New Braunfels. Mold, that's the only allergen showing up yesterday. Of course, the updated count is going to be coming out in uh, just a couple of hours and throughout the rest of today. Fantastic day. You need a coat this morning and even this afternoon if you're in the shadows might have just a little little nip in the air, but 66 warmer than yesterday and fantastic. Mostly clear skies tonight. Another beautiful day tomorrow with a few more high clouds. Like I said, the the whole trend this week is for temperatures to warm up, but we will have increasing clouds as well. Will there be any rain? Big question. And the answer's coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. and Mrs. Horn's favorite son, Justin, is in this morning. <laughs> oh, wow. Now Are you that the only is an son? introduction. Are you the only son? Uh, yes. Well, there you go. <laughs> wasn't wrong. He's not, he's not wrong. <laughs> this, this is true. And boy, the, the sun being out today, man, that makes Monday that much better. Just my opinion. It's, it's been cloudy for so long. Well, let's look at some of the roadways. If you're an early morning commuter, everything here looks good. We have had uh, zero problems on the roadways so far today. Knock on wood. Hopefully we have a smooth commute this morning. You look at some of the uh, freeways here, 410 and Ingram. There was construction there earlier. It's moved out of the way. So uh, good looking uh, roads there. I-10 and Frio. Same story downtown, 35, 410. Uh, not a lot of traffic yet. Obviously, things will pick up here in the coming hours. Of course, school zones will kick in here uh, here fairly soon, so uh, be aware of that. But 35 at Olympia, also looking good. Obviously, dry roads this morning. We just don't anticipate a lot of issues. Again, hopefully, this uh, continues throughout the morning commute. We'll keep you posted should anything change. We'll let you know, guys. Thank you, Justin. New this morning, a dispute between two women has ended with gunfire. San Antonio police say one shot the other. Now they are looking for the shooter. Katrina Weber is live at Public Safety Headquarters with that story. Katrina, do police know what led to this? No, and it seems that they have a whole lot of questions about this shooting. Now, what they do know is that the victim was not seriously hurt. This happened about 3 o'clock this morning. Let me give you a look at the video to show you exactly what uh, was going on at that time. The police found the victim, a 19-year-old woman, in the 5800 block of Spring Valley. That's near Nacogdoches and Judson on the northeast side. Uh, they say that that woman was involved in some sort of a dispute with another woman in the middle of the street. And then that is where things turned into a, even more violence with the shooting happening again around 3 o'clock this morning. Police say the shooter took off. They found the victim there, and they also are questioning another person who may be a witness in this case. But again, not a whole lot of answers at this point. Police still trying to figure it all out. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you for your report. 533, despite planned peace talks today, many still expect the bloodshed in Ukraine to continue. And that seemingly faraway conflict might be hitting closer to home than you realize. CNN's Amy Kiley reports on how the war could affect your life. In Ukraine, the impact of the war is painfully clear. In the U.S., the effects are more subtle. Oil is already up over $100 a barrel, and experts expect the conflict will keep prices high. Ordinary Americans will be paying a little bit higher at the pump, but frankly, I think that is a, a sacrifice that we need to pay because we'll pay far more later if we don't successfully stand up to Putin on this. As the stock market opens Monday, investors are bracing after a roller coaster last week. Meanwhile, boycotts of Russian-branded alcohol are underway at some stores and bars. Kind of like how you bounce somebody from a bar that, you know, just isn't getting along with everybody else. So we just decided to, to dump the Russian vodka for now and because they weren't playing well with others at the bar. Other organizations are finding their own ways to distance themselves from Russian President Vladimir Putin and his country. 
he and his government are being treated like the pariahs that they are. But the Ukraine war is affecting more than just U.S. finances and affiliations. It's igniting anger among protesters here and rekindling Cold War era fear. Top officials in leading NATO countries have allowed themselves to make aggressive comments about our country. Therefore, I hereby order the Minister of Defense and the Chief of the General Staff to place the Russian Army Deterrence Force on combat alert. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. North Korea says it is testing cameras to be installed on a spy satellite. The announcement comes a day after North Korea's neighbors detected a ballistic missile launch. The UN and others think the launch could be a cover for a test of missile technology. Ballistic missiles and rockets and satellite liftoffs typically share similar bodies, engines and other technology. While North Korean state media didn't directly acknowledge any missile launch Sunday, it suggested the North fired a rocket or missile to take space based photos. Former President Trump's attorney general says Republicans should look for another presidential candidate in 2024. In his new book, Bill Barr calls the prospect of Trump running for president again, quote, dismaying. Barr writes that the 2020 election was not stolen, saying instead that Trump lost it. His dispute with Trump over claims of election fraud led to his departure from the administration. In the book, the former attorney general takes readers behind the scenes of the Trump White House. The former loyalist now admits that Trump, quote, has neither the temperament nor persuasive powers a president needs. The book has a release date of March 8th. Caught on camera, check out top of your screen, 18-wheeler crashing off a bridge, falling into a river in Weston, Massachusetts. It's about to pop here any second. You're going to see it. There oh. it is right there. All right. And the moment the 18-wheeler falls right into the icy waters. According to state police, the driver is carrying uh, U.S. Postal Service deliveries at the time of a crash. The driver does not know how to swim and was standing on top of the truck when first responders came to his aid. Hours later, a state police dive team had to help remove the tractor trailer from the river itself. The U.S. mail and packages were recovered from that big rig. Thankfully, no one was killed. Amazing he survived that. I know, especially since he didn't know how to swim. Wow. Okay, right now, 536, 34 degrees. Still ahead, we'll tell you about some braking issues being investigated on two of Honda's more popular vehicles. I will tell you more about San Antonio's Ready to Work program and the money being spent to get thousands of people into high quality jobs. Chilly start this morning, 34 degrees at 537. The sun was out yesterday. Will that trend continue throughout the week? Michael, let us know when we come back. Welcome back. City Council approved contracts for community partners to implement the $200 million SA Ready to Work program. So the goal of the program is to place more than 28,000 people into certificate or degree programs and get at least 15,000 plus of them into high quality in demand jobs. So the director of the initiative joined us this weekend on Leading SA to discuss the plans. Michael Ramsey, the director of the initiative, joined us and we talked about the different facets of the program. The launch is set for April and the idea behind the program is that it's not only going to help current San Antonians get higher paying jobs, but it's also going to make the Alamo City better recruiting more companies to make our community their home. Take a listen. As those jobs continue to flood into the San Antonio community, the people who live here have to be equipped with the skills and the education that's necessary to be qualified to fill those jobs. We know that a high quality job is the answer to many of society's ills, such as affordable housing. Having a good high quality job will help make housing more affordable. Access to transportation. If you had a good job, you can afford that car. Um, making sure that um, individuals in the community have those access to those training and education programs to be competitive for those jobs when they arrive and the jobs that are already existing here in our community is gonna help those segments of the population who have been historically underserved and on the outside of those career pathways to get a leg in and make sure that our talent base here is strong for decades to come. That was just a bit of our conversation. If you have any questions on the benefits, the time frame, and what people need to know if they want to take part in the program, just head to KSAT.com. We have a leading essay every weekend at 8 a.m. We'll see you next Sunday morning. Guys, back to you.
541 about 34 degrees. Up next, a first look at a new report on the impacts of climate change and rising global temperatures that's due out later this morning. Welcome back. A new report on the impact of climate change is out this morning. And ABC's Rena Rory reports it shows an assessment of how rising temperatures could impact everyday life. According to a new United Nations report, the devastating impacts of human-caused climate change are happening now. Today's IPCC report is an atlas of human suffering and a damning indictment of failed climate leadership. And those impacts are getting worse and could potentially be irreversible. Nearly half of humanity is living in the danger zone now. Many ecosystems are at the point of no return now. The report lays bare multiple threats, such as weather extremes, drought, and fire that have already disrupted human life and natural ecosystems, in some cases beyond the point where either are able to adapt. The report makes it clear that those impacts are more widespread and happening more quickly than we had thought previously. The report stresses that significant change needs to occur in the next decade to prevent irreversible damage. And science tells us that will require the world to cut emissions by 45% by 2030 and achieve net zero emissions of greenhouse gases by 2050. But according to current commitments, global emissions are set to increase almost 14% over the current decade. What's new in this report are multiple adaptation strategies that can be successful if the global temperature rise is limited to 1.5 degrees Celsius. If we start protecting people with the types of solutions that we're implementing now, rather than waiting until later, we are more likely to, to save money in the future. Viable solutions are on the table, but scientists and experts are urging action now, not later. Adaptation and mitigation must be pursued with equal force and urgency. Every fraction of the degree matters. Every voice can make a difference, and every second counts. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. In your morning consumer headlines, markets around the world overnight moving even lower. Oil prices, on the other hand, are jumping again. Futures for crude are up around 4.5%. That's helping to push gasoline prices up across the country. The Lundberg survey says the price for a gallon of regular is up 10 cents in the last two weeks to an average of 364 a gallon. That's about a dollar higher than it was this time last year. Wow, okay. Uh, Honda CRV and Accord vehicles are having some issues. There've been about 270 complaints about brake issues, and now the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is investigating. Six of those complaints involve crashes and minor injuries. This is for CRVs from the 2017 to 2019 model years and the 2018 and 2019 Accord. The concern has to do with the automatic emergency brakes with reports the braking can happen unnecessarily without the driver touching the brake pedal. It's not clear if this problem could affect other Honda models or years. NHTSA has opened an investigation into Tesla cars for similar, problem, similar problems earlier this month. It's 547, 33 degrees. Justin is in for Steven this morning. Morning. Hey, good morning. And guys, usually this time of morning, things are generally quiet, but it's really quiet this morning. We've had almost no incidents other than we have a stalled car down around 410 in Somerset there on the southwest side. That's it. It's not causing any problems on the roadways. And as we look at Transguide here, all is well. Uh, a lot of spots, traffic is moving just fine. Obviously, it's still pretty early, but as we get later into the commute, you'll see these volumes pick up a little bit. We may have some issues here and there. We had some construction earlier. That's all been picked up, so good news in that regard. 410 and Parent Vital move, moving smoothly this morning, and a couple other spots. Uh, 410 Marbach uh, looking good at that spot, and 21 and Hildebrand traffic is moving at uh, posted speeds, so all is well. We look at the big map here. All is green. I mentioned that one stall down there, 410 in Somerset, not causing any issues at this hour. And there is some construction here and there that's still out there this morning, but thankfully not causing any slowdowns. We'll keep you posted uh, should we see any incidents out there. But so far, smooth sailing on a Monday. And that's just the way we like it, guys. Yes, sir. Nice way to start things off. Thank you, Justin. Uh, Mike, you got some turkeys behind you? Yes, this was from a couple of days ago. And... Um I guess That's that many together is considered a turkey trot. Do what? That I guess that many together is considered a bit of a turkey trot. Are they trotting or just kind of meandering? Well, they're doing what turkeys do. It's kind of like, durr. <laughs> <laughs> 
If you're a turkey fan, he said it, not me. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you for the KSAC Connect, Connect picture. Keep those pictures coming in because, uh, you know, I love to see the, the fun ones. And then whenever we have any sort of weather going on, that's a great way for us to help uh, tell the story as well. So we've got a lot of clear skies out there right now. And wind chill temperatures, yep, it is pretty cold. 19 now is what it feels like in Kerrville. 24 at Randolph, 28 out there at the airport. And as far as anything going on today, nothing. We're going to have lots of clear skies, maybe one or two uh, high wispy clouds or a slight milky shade of the sky, but it's just going to be a fantastic day. Pretty much the same thing tomorrow. A couple of uh, wispy high clouds here and there, and then the clouds are going to start to move in a bit more as we go on in toward the middle of the week, starting off with a lot of high clouds. First of all, then they will begin to uh, thicken up and we'll see a lot more in the way of clouds going on in the latter half of the week. We start off now granted all week long. It's going to be jacket weather. We'll only be in the even though we're going to be getting into the we're staying in the 50s, I should say for low temperatures by Friday morning, but very cold tomorrow. Still really cold on Wednesday morning, but there is that stair step all going all the way up and we're going to be right around 60 by the weekend. So we'll end up being 10, almost 15 degrees above normal by the weekend for low temperatures. Highs today 66. Then we get up to normal tomorrow and continue upwards hitting close to 80 by the weekend. I think we stay maybe a degree or two below that just because of the extra cloud cover around here on the weekend, but that's going to be the trend is to warm up further on into the future. And again, these models are kind of showing some of those high clouds out there. So a lot of sunshine today, tomorrow, then clouds tend to uh, thicken up and move on in here toward the uh, latter portion of the week. One thing to note in this computer model going through here, not seeing any rain on that. There may be one or two showers later Saturday. Sunday is going to be the better chance for some rain. And that's only 20, perhaps 30%. Some of those lingering on into early Monday morning. And that looks like it's, uh, that's pretty much about it as of right now for at least the next week. Beyond that, perhaps some rain chance. But again, it's still way, way off in the future. 60 today at noon, sunny skies. Glorious day. Open up the window. Well, maybe not by noon because it's still going to be kind of chilly out there. Then by later on this afternoon, 66 for a high with plenty of sunshine and uh, just a little light breeze out of the southeast. Tomorrow, another cold start down to 38 degrees. We get up to 70, 72 on Wednesday. Everything continues to go up a few degrees each and every day on the, both the low and the high end of things. And we'll be up into the upper 70s, a lot of low 80s by the weekend. Couple of showers are possible Saturday late few more on Sunday, but again, nothing as far as really good rain chances. That forecast looks outstanding overall, oh, considered I, most of February. Yeah, I know we need the rain, mm -hmm. but I, I kind of just am going to enjoy these next couple of days. Okay, if you don't have rain, you might as well have great weather. So yes, yeah. next couple yes. of days right. is fantastic. Right. She's got a point. All right, thank you, Mike. Right now, 552, about 33 degrees. It's Tom Holland, who's still number one at the box office. How close his competitors got to knocking him out. That's next. Pick three numbers this morning, 800 Fireball 1. Your daily four numbers, 8950 Fireball 5. Cash 5, 1921, 2330, 32. Texas Lotto, 242635, 374650. Powerball, 1532, 364864. Powerball 19, Power Play 3. Coming up on GMA, the latest on the developments in Ukraine overnight. Our team is on the ground across the region with developing stories as Ukrainian troops and civilians try to hold off the advancing Russian military and how Ukraine's president is rallying his country along with some global support. That plus much more coming up on GMA. We'll see you soon. Concussions aren't great. Jackass Forever stayed in fifth place, taking in $3.2 million. $4.5 million put Death on the Nile in fourth place. Spider-Man No Way Home raised its domestic total to $780 million, with a third place weekend worth $5.8 million. What is your deal, man? Come on. Dog took second for the second straight weekend, earning $10.1 million. I'm pretty sure he just threatened to kill me. Uncharted stayed strong and kept the top spot. $23.3 million gave the video game adaptation a 10-day domestic total of $83 million. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 
Right now on KSAT.com, San Antonio preparing for another tradition. The river walk will be dyed green in March for St. Patrick's Day. The dye is eco-friendly and always dispersed behind a barge that carries a bagpiper. It's an event crowds have gathered for every year since 1968. We have times and dates for this year's event on our website at KSAT.com. Well, ahead in the next hour, GMSA on your Monday morning, the latest on everything that's happening in Eastern Europe. We'll tell you about the planned peace talks set to happen just north of Chernobyl later today. Plus, are you looking for a fun way to get fit? We've got a few ideas for you. And Justin Horn is on traffic duty for us today. It's very dark out there at 1604 and Kyle Seal, but traffic is really building. There's 410 at Jackson Keller with uh, traffic building in almost all the major freeways all around town. We're going to talk with Justin coming up and Mike Ostrage is back with a pretty good looking forecast for the end of February and the beginning of March. You're watching GMSA. Much more to come in our next hour. We'll be back at the top of the hour. This morning, San Antonio police left with questions following an overnight shooting outside of an east side bar. We'll tell you everything we know so far. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. Russia and Ukraine are poised to meet today, although expectations are low for a breakthrough. This says President Biden is set to talk to allies about how to move forward. The latest developments coming up. Down in Australia, nearly a dozen people killed after this. Devastating floodwaters ripping through one region. We'll have the latest. 33 degrees. It's dropped a bit in the last hours at 6 o'clock this morning. But we had some sun yesterday. Mike will let us know if we can expect sun for the next couple of days as well. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is the last day of the month. It's Monday, February 28th. Sarah Costa worked this weekend, never went home, and we got her this morning. Just slept right <laughs> under the desk, Mark and Mike, and I'm, I'm here. Glad you're here, Sarah. <laughs> Good to always be here on a Monday morning with you, gentlemen. Well, we've all agreed this morning that yesterday was an absolute yep. beauty, and Beautiful. we'd like to keep that going. If you forgot your sunscreen, you're not alone. Uh, several of us forgot sunscreen yesterday. You, uh, you said it was like from uh, Close Encounters where you look down and yeah, kind of yeah. Is it just on one side? It is just oh. pretty much one <laughs> side. So you know which way I was facing the smoker <laughs> most of the day yesterday. But, well, oh, man, it was gorgeous. Yeah. On the serious side, even in the wintertime, all the you know doctors, experts say to wear sunscreen each and every day. But now the sun is going to be out a lot more. People are doing a lot more outside. Make mm -hmm. sure you wear plenty of uh, sunscreen. And today's is not going to be an exception to that. Uh, we've got a lot of clear skies obviously doesn't show up too awfully well, but you can see all the uh, twinkling of lights out there past the airport. We are now officially down to freezing here in town. 29 Port say 30 at Randolph. So another really cold morning thanks to all the clear skies, dry air. There is a light breeze out there, so 32 feels like 26. Wind chill 19 in Hondo and 24 up the road, Balverde as well as New Braunfels. Just a low amount of mold. The updated count is going to be coming out in just about, I'll say, an hour or so. And uh, this morning we'll stay right around freezing, obviously 20s in the hill country, and then a nice warm up throughout the day. We'll have mostly sunny skies, perhaps a few high clouds out there. 60 today at noon, and then a high temperature is going to make it all the way up to 66. So that tops yesterday's 62, but we're still going to be a few degrees below normal, and the trend though is going to be to warm up. We will see more clouds though as the week rolls on, but much warmer temperatures approaching 80 by the weekend. Any rain? Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen is off today, so the man, the myth, the legend, Justin Horn is in today. And his introductions are amazing. <laughs> I do traffic more often. I'm feeling good about myself here. Okay, uh, if you want a quick commute this morning, your window is quickly closing here. We're starting to see traffic build in a lot of areas, and this is the time of morning where we would expect that. You're going to see more and more cars in the roads, but 410 pair and bidal looks good. We've had really good conditions most of the morning. We have not had any incidents so far, just the way you'd like to see it on a Monday morning. 410 Marbach looks good. 281 Hildebrand right there at the curve. Traffic is moving just fine at posted speeds. Uh, Highway 90 and 36th Street looks good. We did have a stall down along 410 at Somerset. That's on the service road, so it's not causing any issues at all. 1604 and John Peace, this is an area where traffic will build here pretty quickly. 37 Hackberry looks good, too. Let's look at the big map. Everything's green here. So you're coming in from any of the surrounding communities, Castroville, Lavernia, uh, towards Seguin. Everything's looking good on the major freeways. And no big incidents yet. Obviously, as we said, this is going to change your next... Uh, hour or so, you're going to see traffic really pick up, and we'll keep you posted if some of those uh, speeds start to slow down on the freeways. Guys?
Thank you, Justin. San Antonio police are investigating a shooting that happened in a northeast side neighborhood overnight. Around 3 o'clock this morning, police say a young woman got into an altercation with another woman, and that's when someone pulled out a gun and shot. This happened on Spring Valley, which is near Judson Road and Nacogdoches. The young woman was shot in the arm. Police are speaking with another woman who was with the victim at the time of the shooting, but so far, no charges have been filed. Right now it is 604 San Antonio time 204 in the afternoon. You're looking live at Kyiv, Ukraine or Russian forces press on to the Ukrainian capital despite worldwide condemnation. Russia and Ukraine poised to send delegates to the border with Belarus today, just north of Chernobyl for talks, though expectations are low. This also comes as a civilian death toll rises to at least 350, including over a dozen children. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest from Washington. Good morning. President Biden is set to discuss the Russian invasion with allied nations from the Situation Room today. As the Washington Post is reporting overnight, the Belarus is now preparing to send soldiers into Ukraine to fight alongside Russians. This morning, the stage is set for negotiations between Russia and Ukraine near the border with Belarus, although Ukrainian President Zelensky has already admitted to having low expectations for any breakthrough. The conflict in Ukraine presses on, with a major battle underway in Kharkiv, Ukraine's second largest city, where Ukrainian troops managed to push back their attackers' brief siege of the city. U.S. officials and many analysts say Putin underestimated the Ukrainians. He was, I think, clearly hoping for an easier path to victory. And now he's not only uh, losing some tactical engagements. The White House calling out Putin's latest move after he ordered his nuclear deterrent forces on high alert in response to what he called aggressive statements from NATO countries. This is really a pattern that we've seen from President Putin through the course of this conflict, which is uh, manufacturing threats that don't exist in order to justify further aggression. President Biden and allies working over the weekend to banish big Russian banks from the main global payment system, SWIFT, a move meant to isolate and cripple Russia's economy. Already this morning, Russia's central bank more than doubled interest rates to an unprecedented 20 percent as they scrambled to manage the fallout from Western sanctions. The U.N. is now estimating over 422,000 people have fled Ukraine, the largest and fastest displacement in Europe since World War II. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Some other top stories we're following this morning in Australia. At least eight people are dead this morning after heavy flooding on the country's east side. Parts of Brisbane are completely underwater. More than 1,500 people have moved into evacuation centers, while thousands of homes have been affected, many having no access to power. Multiple emergency flood alerts are still active. Crews have been putting a fence up around Capitol Hill ahead of President Biden's State of the Union address this week. The move comes after a group of protesters announced plans to drive semi trucks into Washington this week to demonstrate against the government. Capitol Police Chief says the decision to put up the fence line was made in conjunction with the U.S. Secret Service. National Guard troops and outside law enforcement agencies are also expected to assist with security. Capitol Police say a number of roads in D.C. will be closed ahead of the speech, which is scheduled for tomorrow night. Tomorrow is Election Day and voters will pick their nominees for governor, attorney general, congressional seats and more. And we have everything you need to know over on KSAT.com right now. Just pull up your phone on the camera app to scan this QR screen, this QR code on the screen for all that voting information, which includes a list of polling locations, the times that will be open, which is 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. tomorrow. In your morning consumer news, a shift towards e-commerce forced by the coronavirus pandemic is becoming permanent at Walmart. The Wall Street Journal says the retailers building out new ways to make deliveries to customers even as the latest surge subsides. AT&T has started deploying and testing 5G small cell radios on street lights in several cities. The company says it's a way of boosting 5G experiences in dense urban environments. AT&T didn't say which cities the testing is taking place. Right now, 608, about 33 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, the Screen Actors Guild Awards are in the books. We'll have the highlights. There's Mr. Sudeikis with a big award, and it looks like Cannon Waddingham. And just ahead, when it comes to online shopping, the buy now, pay later option is becoming more and more popular. We'll tell you why some experts are saying buyer beware.
33 degrees, a chilly start this morning at 6.08. Mark loved the sun so much he didn't put sunscreen on yesterday. Mm -hmm. Will that sunny trend continue? Mike will let us know. Justin sunburned too. Don't okay, just pick okay. on me. Justin. <laughs> Anyone else? We can pick up. <laughs>so if you've been shopping online lately you've probably been offered the option to buy now pay later it's a popular alternative to credit cards that let shoppers receive a product right away while splitting up payments over time but experts say there can be risks that come with the decision to pay over time abc's elizabeth schulze explains for millions of americans making purchases online like 41 year old roly jaspi it could be buying an xbox or an ipad or jackets. An increasingly popular choice at checkout is buy now, pay later. It allows customers to purchase and receive a product right away, sometimes with just a small down payment. Then make a series of installment payments over time without charging interest, as long as those payments are on time. It's much more affordable to pay 250 every two weeks than putting up 1000 right up front. Consultancy Accenture says the number of buy now, pay later shoppers in the U.S. has surged by more than 300 percent since 2018, reaching 45 million active users last year. Financial technology firms like Affirm, Afterpay and Klarna that offer this service are finding a major foothold among younger consumers and shoppers on a budget. Big change is the fact that younger consumers in particular have moved away from traditional credit. And so we've sort of filled that void. But experts warn buy now, pay later firms aren't without risk. Consumer advocates warn shoppers might get behind on payment schedules for multiple products and risk getting charged high late fees and interest. If you can't afford to pay for something in full right now, can you really afford to pay for it in the next month or two? The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau launched an inquiry into the lending practices of the biggest buy now, pay later firms. What was your response to that? I think what's key is what's the purpose of the regulation? If it's about protecting the consumer, we're all for it. If it's about protecting the, you know, the existing financial services system, you know, that could be problematic, right? Because we really do want to offer consumers a different choice and interest free choice. Now, if you're planning to make a purchase using buy now, pay later, experts recommend making a schedule of your payment due dates to make sure that you have enough cash on hand so that you can meet those obligations to avoid damaging your credit. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. 614. All right, uh, Justin, you were saying it's quiet morning, but things are starting to back up a little bit. Yeah, we're starting to see some incidents out there now. We just got a report of an incident at Southeast Loop 410 and WW White. We don't have eyes on it just yet, but it may cause a few backups uh, again along 410 and WW White. Meantime, as we look at some of the Transguide cameras here, everything looks pretty good. We haven't had a lot of issues at all. 281 at Hildebrand, traffic is moving at posted speeds there. Traffic looks to be just fine at 90 and 36, although it is picking up. We're seeing more volume on the road now, and you're going to see that continue to pick up here over the next hour or so. 1604 John Peace looks good, 37 in Hackberry also looking good in 281 winding way. This is an area that we know gets pretty congested uh, right now. Looks just fine. If you're traveling from some of the surrounding communities, th these are all the typical numbers you would see with uh, no issues right now. So just 26 minutes from Bolverde, 19 minutes from Castroville if you're leaving uh, the house at this moment. Uh, as we look across the city, all is well, although that incident that I mentioned in 410 WW White has not been posted just yet. We'll see how that affects traffic here over the next hour or so, and we'll uh, try to get some more info on that coming up in just a little bit, guys. Thank you, Justin. All right, Mike, what's the forecast looking like for the kiddos about to head out on the bus? Well, if you're heading out on the bus, grab a coat. A beautiful start this morning. Make sure you grab your uh, sunglasses because we've got lots of clear skies. Going to show you that in just a second. But uh, allow yourself a little extra time to warm up the car this morning because temperatures are really cold. And it's even colder in portions of the hill country. We're 32 right now. And then more than double that later on today. 66. Still, if you're in the shade, maybe a light jacket, but just a beautiful day. And it's going to clear out or cool down very quickly tonight because of the, uh, the clear skies. Here's one for you, Sarah. Have you started your spring little uh, plantings I yet? I did it too soon and we had, I put seedlings in way too soon. Mm. We had those freezes and whatever popped up is already gone. Uh, I know. Good. So hopefully that uh, kind of wait a little bit until the 
last at least uh, or the, the latest last freeze around here. Beautiful start this morning. Obviously a great looking sunrise and there's that little crescent moon just now coming up. It's a great shot there. All right, let's jump into the future and the uh, Climate Prediction Center and the long range forecast 6 to 10 day temperature outlook. And this is the the odds of it being on the warm side are a little bit more than say 50 50 around here and rain chances then going into the same period are slightly above a, a normal uh, chance of that it's like on the, the good side, if you will. Then beyond that, going into the uh, middle of March, Climate Prediction Center has the odds of being slightly on the cool side, a little better and not much rain around here. So uh, yeah, I mean, we could use a whole heck of a lot more rain. Unfortunately, there's not a lot in the short term forecast for at least the next week. Wind chill temperatures 26 degrees out there at the airport right now, 19 in Kerrville. And uh, nothing as far as any clouds today. Maybe a slight milky shade of the sky. We're going to start to see some high level moisture come in here over the next couple of days. And so that's definitely going to be adding to the, uh, the clouds. A few of them around tomorrow, but still plenty of sunshine today as well as tomorrow. And then the clouds really start to work their way in here on Wednesday. And again, morning low temperatures. It's cold this morning. It's still going to be pretty cold the next couple of mornings. Jacket weather definitely, but the trend is for low temperatures not to be as cold the next few days. And that's because of a lot more humidity around here, as well as the cloud cover. 60 at noon today, sunny skies, fantastic day today. Just kind of a prize winner, pretty much a continuation of yesterday. 66 high temperature, we're still about four below normal though. And then tomorrow we start off, like I said, it's gonna be cold, still cold the rest of the week in the morning. And then no jackets, Tuesday, Wednesday, and all the way through the rest of the week. Temperatures go up a couple of degrees each and every day. We're going to see more clouds. A lot of high clouds start to work their way in here, especially late tomorrow, Wednesday, and clouds going to be thickening up Thursday, Friday. A shower is possible Saturday. A few more on Sunday, perhaps lingering into Monday, but not anything that's really jumping off the, the computer models as far as rain chances, which is not good. Well, it's good to see the sun back after those four yes. or five days with no sun, and you really feel it. <laughs> Well, plus when it was so cold, too. It's miserable on Saturday, yeah. It really was. All right, thank you very much, Mike. Looking good for the next seven days. 619, 34 degrees on your Monday. And still ahead on GMSA, we'll show you the highlights from last night's SAG Awards, including who took top honors home. Why hide your skin if Dupixin has your moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis under control? Hide my skin? Not me. Because Dupixin targets a root cause of eczema, it helps heal your skin from within, keeping you one step ahead of it. Hide my skin? Not me. And for kids ages 6 and up, that means clearer skin and noticeably less itch. With Dupixin, you can change how their skin looks and feels. And that's the kind of change you notice. Hide my skin, not me. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixin. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. When you help heal your skin from within, you can show more with less eczema. Talk to your child's eczema specialist about Dupixin, a breakthrough eczema treatment. Well, last night, stars of TV and film were in Santa Monica for the Screen Actors Guild Awards. Meryl Streep, Carrie Washington, Reese Witherspoon, Will Smith, so many of our favorite actors and actresses out in full force. At the first in-person awards show of the season, ABC's Will Gans has the highlights. And the actor goes to Will Smith. <laughs> The Screen Actors Guild Awards. That may have been uh, one of the greatest moments of my career just now. Where actors recognize actors. Dear God, hi Lady Gaga, you're amazing. But stars are just like us. Thank you very much, sorry. Quick trick to the men's room. <laughs> Michael Keaton nearly missing his own award at the show's first year back in person. Some old faves reuniting from Romy and Michelle to Olivia and Fitz. As for the awards for television comedy, Ted Lasso winning big. 
And on the drama side, Succession taking the top honor, with acting awards going to two of the stars of Squid Game. Both Lee Jung Jae and Jung Ho Yeon, emotional after their historic wins. I love you, my Squid Game girl. And on the film side, the race to the Oscars now hotter than ever thanks to a somewhat surprising win in the race for Best Actress. The SAG Awards often seen as a bellwether of what's to come at the Academy Awards. And after wins for Troy Katzer for Supporting Actor. Really, I'm so proud and it just shows that dreams can come true. And taking home the big award of the night, Coda is now the film to beat on Oscar Sunday. This validates the fact that we deaf actors can work just like anybody else. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, final day, stock show and rodeo last night, second ride of the evening, Locasey Morris on board, hard to handle. The bull definitely lived up to its name. Morris's hand gets caught and he gets bucked off. Luckily, he'd avoid the hooves and get away safely. Stetson Wright, not so lucky. After two successful eight-second rides where his bull came off his hooves, Wright decides to go for a second re-ride. The third trip didn't go well. His head made contact with the bull, and he's knocked off at the six-second mark. Wright was conscious and smiling as he helped off. The ride of the night came on board uh, courtesy of world champ Sage Steele. Kimsey on top of Old Sun. Look at the power. This ride scores a 92, and he is your champion with a brand-new buckle to take home. Congratulations. Well, the Spurs have just one game left on the rodeo road trip. That tips off tonight in Memphis at 7. After that, the Spurs return home Thursday to face the Sacramento Kings. Then on Saturday, the Silver and Black are on the road again to take the Hornets on in the city of Charlotte. Then on Sunday night, tune in to KSAT 12 for the best sport coverage in town on Insta Replay. It's a home for all your sports scores, schedules, and highlights. Catch it Sundays at 11 right here on KSAT 12. All right, 625 and 34 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, a semi truck flies off a bridge and plunges into a Massachusetts River. The incident all caught on camera. We'll tell you if anyone was hurt. And here at home, a young woman in the hospital following an overnight shooting on the northeast side of town. We'll have those details for you. Taking a look outside at trans guy, Justin Horn is in for Stephen Cavazos this morning saying things are starting to pick up. If you're about to leave for work or school, he'll have the details when we come back. It seems that words weren't enough. Police say one woman shot another during a dispute. I'm Katrina Weber, I'll have that story. Outside with live camp, beautiful sunrise, but you know it got really warm yesterday and then it got really cold again overnight with clear skies. We've been hovering just above freezing uh, throughout much of the newscast this morning. Good morning. It's Monday, February 28th. So happy to be joining you this morning on GMSA. And we're glad you are starting your day with us here on The Morning Show. Mike Osterhage is standing by to see how much we will warm up today. And I'm hoping it's a pretty considerable warm up. Yes. About more than double where we are right now. Good. So we'll make Excellent. It up in the mid a little warmer than yesterday. Um, and anything was a lot better than Saturday. Oh, yeah. you're brutal. Well, not only was it cold, but then you had the, the rain to, you know, throw into the mix. But this, today is going to warm up very quickly and then it will cool down fairly quickly tonight as well. So even if you may not need a jacket by this afternoon, keep one handy. Beautiful clear skies out there. The sun is going to be coming up in about a half an hour. So we're right at freezing dew points at 23. So we still have very, very dry air, lower humidity and a light wind, clear skies, all the ingredients for radiation cooling. Now with that light wind, though, we still have a bit of a wind chill to deal with. 26 in town, 24 in New Braunfels and 19, both Kerrville as well as Hondo. Yeah, big heavy coat. Mold is on the low side. The updated uh, pollen count is going to be coming out about a half hour, 45 minutes or so. And throughout the rest of today, clear cold start and then big, big warm up. Like I said, we're going to be more than doubling the current temperature, getting up into the mid and upper 60s. A lot of areas. Very, very nice. If you're in the shadows, still 
kind of a little bit of a nip and then tomorrow plenty of sunshine. Still going to be jacket weather in the morning, but it will be warm in the afternoon and that's going to be the trend each and every day this week for everything to get warmer. But the clouds are also going to be increasing. Notice I don't have any real good mention of any sort of rain out there, perhaps by later in the weekend. Don't get your hopes too high for that. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stevens off today. Justin Horn is in. What's going on, sir? Uh, so far, so good. We've had a pretty quiet morning. There's one incident, and I'll show you that here in just a second. Otherwise, traffic is flowing very nicely this morning. Keep in mind, the school zones are going to be kicking in here quickly. If you're traveling through one of those, uh, remember to uh, slow down. You'll see the flashing lights. Uh, 410 Jackson Keller looks good. Traffic's moving nicely. Sun's starting to come up. It'll be a sunglasses type of morning uh, with that uh, sun, uh, full sun expected today. 410 Marbach looks good there. Uh, same story. Uh, as we look at 21 and Hildebrand, the curve, everything good there. Uh, looking at, uh, at the big picture here in the map, we had an incident posted here at WW White and 410. They since have moved where that incident is or changed where they, th they thought it may be. And that looks like it's up here along 410 and FM 78. So that may be where the issue is. So far, there has not been any slowdowns or anything like that. This is 410 southbound where that issue is so right there, Ben Zingelman. We'll keep an eye on it so far. Again, not a lot of issues, and as traffic picks up, uh, we're going to start to see some slowdowns here around town, and we'll keep you posted on those so when they show up. Guys? Justin, thank you. San Antonio police looking for a woman who they say used a gun to end an argument. They say she shot another woman overnight in the middle of a northeast side neighborhood. Katrina Weber is live at Public Safety Headquarters with that story. Is there any update on the woman who was shot, Katrina? Well, from what police tell us, it seems like she should be okay. They say that 19-year-old woman was shot in her arm. Now, the other woman, though, may not be okay when police catch up with her. She faces criminal charges. The police found the victim around 3 this morning after they answered a call for help in the 5800 block of Spring Valley. That's near Nacogdoches and Judson Roads. Police say that woman had been shot in her arm. The shooting happened during a dispute with another woman. And that shooter ran off before police arrived. The last word we had, they were questioning a potential witness in this case. But again, it sounded like police didn't have a whole lot of information at that time about the shooter. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you very much, Katrina. Also new this morning, San Antonio police trying to piece together an overnight shooting incident. It happened around one this morning in front of an east side bar on Bellinger Street, not far from Martin Luther King Drive. Officers say a man and woman were leaving the bar when all of a sudden three suspects started shooting at them from across the street. The victims were hit by the gunfire, but they were able to drive to the hospital for help. They are expected to be okay. The search continues for the three suspects. All right, right now you're looking at a live picture of Kyiv, Ukraine. Russian troops continue to press into the capital city despite the peace talks planned for today. Many expect the bloodshed in Ukraine to continue. It's a conflict that's far away, but it might be hitting closer to home than you may realize. CNN's Amy Kiley has more on how the war could be affecting your life. In Ukraine, the impact of the war is painfully clear. In the U.S., the effects are more subtle. Oil is already up over $100 a barrel, and experts expect the conflict will keep prices high. Ordinary Americans will be paying a little bit higher at the pump, but frankly, I think that is a, a sacrifice that we need to pay because we'll pay far more later if we don't successfully stand up to Putin on this. As the stock market opens Monday, investors are bracing after a roller coaster last week. Meanwhile, boycotts of Russian-branded alcohol are underway at some stores and bars. Kind of like how you bounce somebody from a bar that, you know, just isn't getting along with everybody else. So we just decided to, to dump the Russian vodka for now and because they weren't playing well with others at the bar. Other organizations are finding their own ways to distance themselves from Russian President Vladimir Putin and his country. He and his government are being treated like the pariahs that they are. But the Ukraine war is affecting more than just U.S. finances and affiliations. It's igniting anger among protesters here and rekindling Cold War era fear. 
Top officials in leading NATO countries have allowed themselves to make aggressive comments about our country. Therefore, I hereby order the Minister of Defense and the Chief of the General Staff to place the Russian Army Deterrence Force on combat alert. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Back here at home, some other top stories we're following this morning. A local toddler who police say accidentally shot herself in the head has died from her injuries. The shooting happened earlier this month on Dublin near Pickwell's Drive. When officers arrived, two-year-old uh, Jules Gonzalez had been shot in the head. It's unclear exactly how she was shot. Jules's mother and her boyfriend were at the home at the time of the shooting. Last check, no charges had been filed. The investigation is ongoing. A local family's truck was stolen outside of a West Side funeral home, but it was what was inside that has the family begging thieves to have a heart. The Arredondo's family pets, a poodle named BB and a cockatoo named Pear, died recently, and their cremated remains were inside urns in that truck. Patricia Arredondo said she's not concerned about the 2001 Red Ford F-250 that was taken. She wants the ashes returned, no questions asked. Losing them the first time was really, really hard. Then to lose them a second time, it's like unbelievable. Right now, vehicle burglaries, they're on the rise across the city. On February 19th, a vehicle left running at a convenience store was stolen with a seven month old baby girl in the backseat. She was returned uninjured. A collision between an Austin City bus and a vehicle sent several people to the hospital. It happened over the weekend on East 11th Street and the I-35 service road after an Austin City Metro bus with passengers on board T-boned a car carrying three adults and two kids. The two children were unconscious when paramedics arrived and the two adults were pinned inside and had to be cut out. In total, nine people were taken to Austin hospitals. That intersection was closed for hours as police investigated the incident. Cap Metro sent out a statement about the crash saying in part quote from video recorded on the bus. It appears that a vehicle ran a red light and our bus made contact with it. Our hearts are with all those who are impacted in quote. Caught on camera, you're going to want to look up at your screen at this crazy video, an 18 wheeler crashing on a bridge, causing it to fall into a river in Weston, Massachusetts. You can see it right there right into the river on security video. You can see that moment when that 18 wheeler falls into the water. According to state police, the driver was carrying USPS mail at the time of the crash. The driver does not know how the, to swim and was standing on top of the truck until first responders came to his aid. Hours later, a state police did dive team had to help remove the tractor trailer from the river. The mail and packages were recovered from the truck. The man was not injured. A Texas man charged with storming the U.S. Capitol with a holstered handgun on his waist is the first January 6th defendant to go to trial. Jury selection is scheduled to start today in the case against Guy Wesley Reffitt. He's also charged with interfering with police at the Capitol and threatening his teen children if they reported him to authorities after the insurrection. Reffitt's trial could be an indicator for many other Capitol riot cases. A conviction would give prosecutors more leverage in plea talks. An acquittal may lead others to wait for their own day in court. Former President Trump's attorney general says Republicans should look for other presidential candidates in 2024. In his new book, Bill Barr calls the prospect of Trump running for president again, quote, dismaying. Barr writes that the 2020 election was not stolen, saying instead that Trump lost it. His dispute with Trump over claims of election fraud led to his departure from the administration. In the book, the former attorney general takes readers behind the scenes in the Trump White House. The former loyalist now admits that Trump, quote, ne has neither the temperament nor persuasive powers a president needs. Bill Barr's memoir memoirs as attorney general has release date of March 8th. Right now, 640, about 34 degrees. Still have a lot more heading your way on GMSA. After the break, we're talking about a fun way to get active. In your morning medical news, we're talking about an easy way to get active. Pickleball is still growing in popularity. It's a hybrid of tennis, badminton, and ping pong. It can be played on an indoor or outdoor court. Courts, same size courts used in badminton, and there's since there isn't as much running back and forth, although I'd argue there is, uh -huh. <laughs> it's yep. easy for kids and people uh, past their 50s. Right now on our website, we have a link to where you can find a pickleball court near you. It's a lot of fun. It's definitely addicting. Okay, so while you're on our website, 
We all know it's important to live a health conscious lifestyle, but what is your healthy eating IQ? We took the quiz last week on GMSA at nine and learned a lot. Now it's your turn. Just look for this story on the health section of ksat.com. Uh, my biggest takeaway last week was I did not know that Twinkies are not considered a superfood. It's just rather dismaying. Who would have guessed? <laughs> Kale is, though. Hmm. Oh, 644. Okay. Let's check on traffic. Here's uh, Justin in for Steve. Oh, you don't say, Mark. Uh, <laughs> let's look at Transguide for you real quick. We've had a couple of incidents out there. This is 410 and FM 78. That's where we had a report of a crash earlier. It looks like we just have a stalled car. It's not causing any issues, so uh, not a lot of problems there. Uh, there was a hero truck there a little bit earlier that has since moved on. Uh, we'll look at some other spots here across town. And so far, everything looks pretty good. 37 at Houston, 37 at Southeast Military. We are noticing volumes are starting to pick up a little bit more. 604 Kyle Seal, this is always an area that tends to get a little congested. So far, it uh, looks like traffic's still moving at posted speeds. 410 Jackson Keller, same story. And 410 Parent Vital, everything's moving nicely along 410. Take a look at gas prices, man. They keep going up. 3.27 here in Bear County. That is the average price for Texas, 3.28. And for the country as a whole, 3.61, or $3.61, I should say. Uh, it's uh, getting more expensive to fill up. And as we look across uh, the city on our map here, it's showing an incident there. That is actually not there. It was the uh, FM 78 one that we showed you. Otherwise, a couple stall cars here and there. We do have a report of a stall along 35 near New Braunfels near Salm Road. That is not causing any backups. Uh, looks like it's just blocking maybe the shoulder there, guys. Justin. Yeah, I filled up the other day 329 a gallon. Ugh, I don't yeah. even want to do, fill up the full tank. Just because yeah. it feels better when you just do like a quarter or half. Like, okay, that wasn't so bad. A lot of people are doing that now. Yeah, maybe yeah. they get down to about half a tank, fill it back up just mm -hmm. a little bit. At some point, you have to bite the bullet, though, and it is, whew. It's tough. Yeah, that gets <laughs> tough. All right, yesterday it was great to see a sunset for the first time in several days. Correct, Miss Sarah? The finally had some sunshine out there yesterday. It was gorgeous, and we're going to see the same thing again today, and we're seeing a good-looking sunrise this morning as well. But it's cold out there. Temperature 32. Most everybody is freezing right now, with the exception on this map of Canyon Lake, Stinson, and Divine. But then you factor in the wind, and it feels like it's down in the 20s in most locations. Even some teens. Wind chills 16 in Kerrville, 19 Hondo, 21 right now at Randolph and we do have a little bit of moisture upstairs in the atmosphere. If this was completely that dark shade as it was yesterday and now perhaps slightly more moisture, maybe not as intense blue skies. This is kind of splitting hairs. It's still going to be a fantastic day today. Obviously nothing is showing up on the uh, satellite picture and everything. We do have some moisture coming in here from the Pacific Ocean and that's pretty much going to be sliding up to the north of us. But the thing to take away from this is notice how all of these systems this main flow right there is going right along the northern tier of the United States in through the Great Lakes and up through the northeast. And that's where the main flow of the jet stream is. And that's keeping everything, all the cold air, really cold air up there to the north. I know it's cold right now, but the, the overall trend will be for temperatures to warm up, keeping all that, all kind of weather systems further up there to the north as well, which is evident on this map. Now, this one takes into account some of the high level moisture in here. It's not going to be this cloudy at all today nor tomorrow. Then we start to see clouds definitely uh, increasing by the end of the week going in toward the weekend. Also, there's nothing on here as far as any rain. There may be a stray shower Saturday. This particular computer model does not depict that. And then by Sunday later, even during the day, one or two showers are possible, but a somewhat slightly better chance of rain than late Sunday going into Monday. But again, not really a great shot of rain. It doesn't look like hopefully something changes in the next week between now and then. But uh, not looking like it. 60 at noon. Sunny skies. Good looking day today. Um, 66 for a high temperature, about four above yesterday, but still four below the normal high temperature. Tomorrow and actually every other morning the rest of the week is going to be definitely jacket weather. But the trend will be for things to warm up a few degrees each and every day. Same thing with the high temperatures. 70 tomorrow and then we'll finish up the week in the mid 70s, upper 70s, some low 80s by the weekend with plenty of clouds around here. A shower Saturday, perhaps one or two of them on Sunday, especially later Sunday. But still, it's not looking like rain chances or anything to get overly excited about. And look at how warm next weekend's going to be. 
whole I'm, different, I'm here for it. Whole different story than last week. Yeah. Although last week was warm, and then it got really cold. It was like, pew, yeah. pew. That. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's going to be one of our new animations here at KSAT. <laughs> <laughs> 649, about 34 degrees. Hey, tomorrow it's election day. So on GMSA tomorrow, we'll be live at the polls with everything you need to know before you head out and vote. Team coverage on all our newscasts, including the night beat and online at KSAT.com. Let's go outside with live cam. And yes, it is cold this morning. You see the steam vent there kind of. Uh, is, is really going this morning. 34 degrees out at San Antonio International. We are going to wrap up GMSA after this. A Ukrainian delegation agreeing to meet with Russia for talks at the Ukrainian-Belarusian border Monday morning, local time. We are ready for peace talks, but we are not ready to surrender. This as Russian President Vladimir Putin orders his country's deterrence forces, including nuclear arms, on high alert. This is really a pattern that we've seen from President Putin through the course of this conflict, which is uh, manufacturing threats that don't exist in order to justify further aggression. Putin's move comes as Russian forces advanced into Ukraine's second largest city, where street fighting broke out. But after massive explosions heard near the capital city, Kyiv, the mayor said on Sunday no Russian Russian troops are on the ground there. The Russians are very frustrated right now, and truthfully, they have not accomplished any of their objectives on the timetable that they thought they would. Sunday, the U.S. Secretary of State announcing nearly $54 million in humanitarian aid to Ukraine. There are now at least 368,000 refugees from the Ukraine crisis, according to the U.N. Refugee Agency. We're not going to put boots on the ground. We're not going to put American troops in danger. But we will work with the Ukrainians to give them the ability to, uh, to defend themselves. Ukraine and some U.S. officials calling on the White House to do more and keep upping the sanctions against Russia. You can't get the sanctions too high. Let's keep on uh, cranking up the sanctions against what is a, an evil regime. I'm Cole Higgins reporting. A reminder, tomorrow's Election Day and voters will pick their nominees for governor, attorney general, congressional seats and more. We have everything you need to know on KSAT.com. Scan the QR code on your screen for voting information, including a list of polling locations, which will be open from 7 to 7 tomorrow. And real quick, the State Department has closed the U.S. Embassy in Belarus and allowing uh, non-essential staff at the MC in Russia to leave the country due to the war in Ukraine. That from ABC News. We'll keep you updated mm -hmm. on that. We're going to check in with Justin one more time before you head out the door. A couple issues out there. We're going to go to 410 and FM 78. That's where we have a stalled car. And we had some lights there earlier. Uh, they've since moved away. The car's still there, but it's really not causing any slowdowns. So that's the, the good news in that regard. And then I want to take you out to 1604 in Petrenko. This is on the service road here, there's a grass fire that they're watching. I believe it's out here. You can see some of the smoke. So there are some flashing lights there. It looks like maybe one lane blocked. If you're going to be uh, around that area, know that there could be a few slowdowns. Otherwise, around the city, everything else looks good. No reports of any uh, accidents at this point, Mike. Thank you, sir, and beautiful sunrise on tap this morning. A lot of clear skies out there. It is cold, though. We did warm up one degree, 33 right now in town, and most everybody is below freezing and well down into the 20s. Then you've got somewhat of a wind chill to deal with right now, so enough of a breeze out there, but it's going to be a gorgeous day, 60 at noon, and then 66 for a high temperature today. Get out and enjoy it. All right, that's a wrap. Good way to start a Monday. Thanks for being with us. Happy Monday. We'll be back here for GMSA at 9. Good Morning America is next.